Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video, we're going to do another example of how to find a stable distribution matrix using a two by two matrix to begin with, and also to find the stable P matrix, the probability matrix. So again, it, it helps to see it a couple times with a few different numbers so that you see, okay, that's the technique. I know how to use that now. All right, so again, we're going to assume that the stable distribution matrix is going to be something like this, A and B. So it turns out we need to find the final states of A and B to find the stable distribution matrix. Okay, so we start, we then begin with the concept that if we multiply the probability matrix times the stable distribution matrix, we should, we should get back the stable distribution matrix because that's the hallmark of the stable distribution matrix that if you keep multiplying it times P, eventually it settles in to a stable matrix that no longer changes. You can keep on multiplying it times P and the numbers will no longer change. We need to find out what those numbers are, what A and B are. With other words, the states A and B. All right, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and multiply the P matrix. 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and multiply that times A and B, which of course are assumed to be the final states, and then that will have to equal A and B. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So it's 0 0.9 times A plus 0 0.5 times B equals A. So 0 0.9 times A plus 0 0.5 times B equals A. And on the second row, 0 0.1 times A plus 0 0.5 times B equals B. So 0 0.1A plus 0 0.5B equals B. And of course, you also realize that A plus B must equal 1 as well. So A plus B must equal 1. So we take this first equation. It doesn't really matter which of the two equations we take. We should get exactly the same results. So when we move the 0.9a to the other side, we get 0.5b equals a minus 0.9a, or 0.5b equals 0.1a. Now, if we multiply both sides of that equation by 5, we get, oh, maybe, how about if I multiply times 10? That would be better. Then we get uh, 5b equals a. And so now we have a relationship between a and b. We then use that right here. I plug it in in for A, so we get 5B plus B equals 1, or 6B equals 1, or, I'm running out of room here, so we can say that B equals 1 divided by 6. Well, if B is equal to 1 divided by 6, and A is 5 times B, we can also find out what A is equal to. A is equal to 5 times, and that would be 1 sixth, or A is equal to 5 sixths. So these are the two final states for A and B, which we can then plug in here, and that then, then gives us the final distribution or the what we call stable distribution matrix. So this would be 5 sixths and 1 sixth. Now, once we have that, we can very easily come up with the stable matrix because the stable matrix is simply P with these elements replaced by the final states of A and B. So the stable distribution matrix, P is therefore going to be equal to 5 sixths, 1 sixth, 5 sixths, and 1 sixth. And that's how we do that. 